Okay, hi everyone, welcome to a brand new video. So this video is going to be a bit different from its kind because we're going to detail a bit further into a specific MongoDB Compass feature. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I feel like not enough people use this feature or maybe even know about it. So I'm just going to use this video to sort of highlight this feature and tell you how you can use it. Now, let's just get started. So I'm going to get started by connecting to my local host. So now I'm going to connect to the existing MongoDB instance on my machine rather than a database on the cloud, for example, using MongoDB Atlas. So I'm just going to paste my connection string. Here I'm connecting to localhost at this port, which is the default port for MongoDB. Now I press connect. Now these are the existing databases that I already have. So in my previous MongoDB videos, we used this products collection within the My Database sample database that I have to perform different types of queries, deletions, and updates. So this was really some sample data that we worked with. And I'm just going to refer back to it, although you don't have to have had watched these videos. Anyways, so this is the data that we have. One important feature that I want to talk about, so this is the feature that this video is about, is the feature that exists right here called export to language. Now this feature, feature may look a bit weird if you don't have any query typed up. So right now there's really nothing you can change. So you can type here, but no changes truly happen. So the reason that is, is because this is specifically for exporting your queries to a certain language. Now by queries, we mean the filters or the matching functions that we use to be able to maybe just have um, matches here and like change the values. So for now, if I say, for example, available is true, and I want to just see uh, the, the products that have available as true. So I have two products right here. So these are, these are the two products that are available as true. Now, if I want to export this query to a language, so this is what I have as soon as I press the export query to language button. So my query is available true. Now, if I export it to Python 3, it looks quite the exact same. However, here's one thing to note. So here, it just took our query. So you know, if you know anything about MongoDB, you know that the queries are actually documents. So we use documents to filter and match the queries and return the documents that we want when we query. So here, the document in the MongoDB way that we write it, we do know in MongoDB true and false are lowercase, and we know that the field names do not necessarily have to have quotations surrounding them. Meanwhile, in Python 3, here we have quotations surrounding the available. So it ha we have quotations surrounding the field name, as well as true gets converted from the normal lowercase true from MongoDB to the uppercase T true of Python 3. Now here, the differences aren't that major because we have these hash, um, hash tables in Python 3 or what we like to call Python dicts that we use as sort of JSON objects or as sort of BSON objects for MongoDB. But if we change this to Java, for example, here's what we get. So we get equals to available true. So if I uncheck builders, we get new document available is true. So here we're creating a MongoDB document. Now, this is what we're doing. So we're converting our query, which is in MongoDB syntax that we're using in MongoDB Compass or even perhaps MongoDB shell. So we can use this in shell to query and return the relevant documents. We're changing this to Java. And this is the sort of syntax that we have in Java, but it doesn't end here. The reason that is, is because we have these checkboxes that can sort of help us within writing our code. So if I press include import statements, here I get an import of the document class in Java, which I use to interact with MongoDB. So a MongoDB document is part of the org.bson.document package in Java. And this is a sort of constructor, one of the formats for the constructor. And this is sort of what it looks like. So by including the import statement, I managed to figure out what sort of class Java uses without even referring to the documentation. Now, if I use include driver syntax, I get a lot of more code. So this is the code that we're going to use. So let's just highlight it quickly. So this is some import statements that we have in Java to be able to get these different um, perform these different operations while interacting with the MongoDB database. Now here we have um, even an, an, what we need to install. So we requ it requires the MongoDB Java driver that we need to install. So it's even telling you what you need to do. 
Now we have the BSON filter where we're creating the new document, which is the filter. Now we create a Mongo client, which means we connect to the local host. So this is our client. In the case of the cloud, we would be connecting to the cloud database. And then we create a MongoDB database. So we create a variable for connecting to the MongoDB database, as well as create a variable to connect to the collection and then perform the query on our collection. So this is all in Java. We can do the same for Python. So if we go back here, this is Python. This is how we import. So because we included the import statements, this is how we import then in the we create a client to connect to our local host instance of MongoDB. Then this is our filter. Like we said in Python, we use the dicts or the hash tables to represent MongoDB documents. And then we perform this um, filtering using the find function in, that we have in our MongoDB client. So this is what we have. So through this existing feature in MongoDB Compass, which is what I wanted to highlight in this video, we learned how to use the existing feature to more of, in a way, learn how these different language drivers work with MongoDB. So like I said, the driver for Python is PyMongo. The driver for Java is the following MongoDB Java driver, which they tell you you need to install. So this is really how it works. And through this, you're able to learn more about how to apply the queries that you already know in MongoDB to sort of any of these four existing languages. So thank you very much for watching. Um, so apparently this is not uh, implemented for C Sharp, so I don't know why this exists. And it is does exist for Node. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one, and bye-bye.